If you slow down, you can keep going. So I go slowly. Are we taking the same road on the way back? Yes, we are. I had been using this road for a month, and then they found mines here. At the time it was five years since my aunt died, and we were baking pies, and I suddenly saw that my child was stopped, hands behind the head, we all got scared, ran out. Then eight people with machine guns came into the house. They took all the men and searched the house. They also took electric appliances. I asked them what they were looking for. They said, forbidden items. What do you mean, I asked. Drugs and weapons. I said we didn't have any. They could only find some bread here. Were they Russians? People from Luhansk and Donetsk regions. They showed us their papers on the very first day when they came. Did they look like alcoholics? Like homeless people. They even took my husband's pea jacket and boots. They asked why we had these clothes at home. I said that's what we wear when we work around the house. They also took my son's binoculars. They said we were spotters. They checked it and saw it was good enough to see far. They took all phones and laptops. They said they were only checking that day. The first thing they said upon entering the house was, who doesn't like the Russian language here? So we know that somebody told them. We even know who it was. Just a second. I'll be right there. So we know that somebody said it about us, because my son speaks Ukrainian on principle, and he was the first one they took with them. They took them all to school, took all our passports and documents. I followed them to school. I didn't see what they were doing in the school. Later on, they let the men go, but I heard them shouting, go away from here. I had never seen my son like that. Then I realized that something terrible had happened there. When he came home, he told me they shot at him, because he didn't want to speak Russian. They asked when Lenin was born, he said he had no clue and didn't care. They also asked when Bandera was born, and said that such Nazis must be shot dead. Then five days later we went to get checked. When we came, we saw that no one cared about us. The school was empty, and then we saw a man approaching us. He was dressed differently, and he shouted us to go away. My son told me there had been rotation, and these were new people who didn't know local roads and paths, so we had to flee. So he got on his bike and went to Kharkiv. He was supposed to go through Makarivka and Karasivka villages, but he was halted there too. At first we didn't know that. When he was released, he told us. Were those Russians there? Yes, they were. They spoke differently too. And those were some homeless people, poorly dressed, terrible. What about your cellar? The cellar. My daughter-in-law was pregnant and she asked them to let us go and she said it was our right to choose where to live and where to die. But they wouldn't. They said it was dangerous there. So they made us all go to Belgorod. And when we had left, they lived in our cellar. And when we came back on September 11th, we saw that they had lived in the cellar. Zhenya told us they lived in every yard. Yes, but not in the houses, in cellars or sheds. My neighbor said they drank from crystal glasses. So I want to show you our cellar. These dogs aren't ours. They have come from somewhere. Just look at him, so handsome. Do you have dog food? Yes, I do. <laughs> Did they taunt people? We didn't know that. We were all scared. We didn't really talk to each other. Although in our house there were nine people and a lot of people would come to give us humanitarian aid. They brought it out here, made a mess. They like it. They ate it all. Watch out. On the first days we hid here. And then we remembered that we had another cellar and we moved there. It was safer in there. Just look. They covered everything with carpets. Just have a look. People say that Burats do it like this. But I don't know for sure. 
they took my son's desk and my office chair from the house. In here they kept it nicely. My son told me, showed me some pictures of their notebooks that he had found here. When did they leave? On September 11th. I don't even know where they took this all. And then you came back, didn't you? Yes, and we found the house in total mess. It was terrible. I don't know what they were looking for. We are regular people, nothing special. Is it the same with your neighbors? It's even worse. My neighbor told me she took children pictures to the cellar in case there was a fire. They'd be safe in here. So they threw them around and spilled juice on them. When she found them, they were covered with mold and were destroyed. She was heartbroken. Why would anyone do that? Another neighbor told me that there was a Ukrainian embroidered shirt in her laundry basket. So they took it out and wiped their feet with it. Why? She then washed it, all dirt went away, and now she still has it. How are you feeling now? Are you afraid they might come back again? I believe they won't come back. Well, they might try, but our soldiers won't let them come. We see our people's mood, our soldiers. We shouldn't talk about it, but we believe in better. People, volunteers, military. Yes, we know they won't get through. It was really scary at the beginning, though. When they went in a column along the highway, tanks, we went out, scared eyes. But what could we do? But when they spent a month in the neighbor village and didn't manage to move further, we knew they couldn't do anything. They are weak and stupid. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to heroes. It will be Ukraine. It's gonna be okay.